Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. We are live, we are live, we are live, and welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast. This is episode number 106, and I am your host, Funk Roberts. Uh, I'm known around the world as the guy who helps men in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond completely transform their lives, completely transform their bodies, completely transform their health through mindset strategies and tips, through nutrition, through workouts specifically designed for men over 40, through um, uh, recovery, route, recovery, whether it's sleep or mobility, and through changing their overall health. And I'm really excited that you're here because this podcast is dedicated to men over 40. This podcast is dedicated to you, the man who is trying to be um, the provider, the protector, the procreator, and the patriarch of your family, and to be able to be that role model that your kids, your grandchildren, and the people, the loved ones around you need you to be. No excuse, because I'm here for you. And today, we are going to tap into the recovery pillar. We're going to tap into that pillar that most guys neglect. We're going to tap into the pillar that most guys think that may, may be the last thing on the, on, on, on the totem pole when it comes to, to health but in fact is probably the second next to mindset because what mobility does, it allows us and ensures that we stay injury free, right? What recovery does, injury free. Um, It it ensures that we recover from our workouts. It ensures that we, um, you know, hit all of the, the, the things that we need to hit regards to mobility, stability, our motor control. As we get older, we lose that pain free, all of those things that, that, that hamper us, um, throughout our lives as we get older. And so recovery, and, and I'm not talking about the stress. I'm not talking about sleep. I'm talking more about physical recovery, but also physically preparing our bodies, restoring our bodies. Um, you know, we should be restorative, right? We should have that type of element into our overall fitness. Um, you know, we, we, we need to be able to be athletic. We need to be able to, to, to defend. We need to be able to move. And so ensuring that we're doing something that, that, that taps into that. And so today I'm excited because we're going to talk about Pilates. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking Pilates. I mean, isn't that something women only do? Right? Pilates. I mean, when is the last time you even heard the word Pilates? Like, I do remember, and I, I talk about this in this podcast episode. I remember when at the very beginning, um, not beginning, but years ago, yoga was a thing, right? I'm talking like, I'm talking like in the eighties, let's say eighties, nineties, you know, it was yoga, 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 you know, I'm going to yoga, I'm going to yoga, not, not generally guys, but that was what, you know, that was, that wasn't, that wasn't like a foreign word, but then Pilates jumped in, right? Pilates was, you know, people, there was those Pilates machines. You would go to your physio. There was some Pilates stuff in there. People were going to Pilates. It it was very common for you to hear women mostly say, Hey, I'm going to Pilates class, honey, I'm going to my Pilates class. Like that was common. And then the different variations of yoga took over like hot yoga or, you know, Bikram yoga and, and all these different types of yoga. Um, but Pilates, although kind of thrown to the sideline, is actually probably the most important um, recovery piece that we can add. Yes, there's mobility, but Pilates, if done in the way that our guest is going to talk about, will help with mobility, will help with stability, will help with the motor control, will help with activation. All of these things that we need, not only for recovery, but to ensure that we stay injury free pain-free and get the most out of our workouts and everyday functional life. So today we've got Owen Everard from Ireland. He's got a PhD in, uh, he's, he's a, in biomechanics. He's a physiotherapist. He's a runner, not only just a runner, but a champion 
runner, five-time national runner, and he's now the world over 35 uh, champion. And uh, he is going to talk about and introduce us to his sports Pilates. And although sports Pilates that he's created is was 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 more for runners because he is a runner. Obviously, he's he, he's a world champion runner, but he's also getting older. And then you're going to learn about again what happens to our bodies as we get older, even if you're at a world champion level. But how we can use this type of Pilates in order to help us and ensure that we recover, ensure that we're strong, ensure that we're, as I mentioned, mobile, st stable, we can activate, we learn how to activate. And so I'm excited because this is like, it, it's almost like the same time when I introduced everybody to the mobility portion and Rustin and what happened after that. Like the 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 life changing um, um 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 things that we hear all the time from testimonials and case studies from these guys who start to implement the mobility portion and it's like oh my god I feel better my no more knee pain no more back pain no more hips I'm more mobile I'm just I have more energy uh, I'm lifting heavier like all of those great things I don't wake up with in, in pain same thing with Pilates I this is going to be this this is going to have the same same effect because I'm doing this it's implementing this because I, I know what you're going to learn is going to be fascinating in the sense that we need to implement these type of things into our overall health as we get older or else we're going to continue to deteriorate even if we're just going to the gym that's not enough going to the gym is not enough it's not enough. On the physical side, just going to the gym is not enough. Just doing workouts is not even close to being enough. We have to put enough respect on our recovery. That means our mobility, our stability, and things that will help us stay strong, healthy, supple, and pain-free. And so today we're going to talk to Owen Everard and we're going to learn about sports Pilates. And if you listen to this episode and you're like, man, this is great. I love this episode. This is great. I'm going to start this. You know, the only thing I'm missing, though, is everything else. I don't have workouts. I don't have a nutrition plan. I don't have I don't have anything. I don't have coaching. I don't have any support. You know, I've been trying all these workouts. I've been trying all these programs. They're just not working for me. Um, then you want to join my Over 40 Alpha Brotherhood, the Over 40 Alpha program. It is $1 for 30 days. And I'm going to guarantee you that in those 30 days, you're going to lose 5 to 20 pounds. I, start, I, I lowered the threshold from 7 to 20 pounds because I know that some guys are coming in, they're a little bit skinny fat, so they don't really need to lose 5 pounds. They need to get rid of the belly fat and start to build more muscle and change their overall health. But in 30 days for $1, you're going to have an entire program, follow along workouts. You're going to have a mindset. I'm going to teach you that, 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 that one thing that everyone gets wrong, uh, who generally always fail. The people who are always start programs and then start and then end up quitting those programs is because there's one thing that they don't do that you need to do. And I'm going to teach you that right off the bat. You're going to get that. You're going to get follow along workouts that you can, that you can access either on my app or on the website. You're going to get warm ups. You're going to get uh, stretches. You're going to get abs. You're going to get a uh, recovery piece in there. Um, you're going to have a nutrition plan specifically designed for men over 40. Why? Because we can't eat the same that we used to. So it's a full nutrition, uh, a piece. That helps with our balances, our hormones, help kickstart our metabolism, boost our testosterone levels. Um, it gives us all, all everything we do to, to fight chronic health. It gives us more energy. You're also going to get um, a, a weekly coaching because I do weekly live coaching every Sunday. Weekly live coaching. Who gives you weekly live coaching? This is $1. So for $1, you're going to get four live coaching sessions. 
Plus, you're going to get our Hangout in the Facebook group. That's another four sessions. Plus, you're going to get our community of thousands and thousands and thousands of men over the age of 40, 50, 60, 70 from all over the world who've transformed their lives living this program. And they're going to be there to support you. Go to over40alpha.com. Start with $1. You're going to get 30 days for $1. And then if you, even before the third days, if you don't like it, you can just say, you know what, Funk, I'm, I'm, this is not for me. But I guarantee you, when you start, you're going to get results. And then you'll have everything. You'll not only have the Over 40 Alpha Brotherhood, but you'll also have what Owen Everard is going to talk to us today about. And that is Sports Pilates for Men Over 40. Enjoy the episode. Okay, we are live. We are live. We are live, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. And I'm excited today because we are going to, you know, we're going to dip back into um, the world of Pilates. And the reason why I say dip back into is because I do remember and recall a time in in uh, as I was growing up where Pilates was a very, very, very uh, popular uh, way to help with mobility and flexibility. You know, there was yoga for a bit, then Pilates kind of took over. You, everyone was going to Pilates class, Pilates class, and then it went back to like different variations of yoga. But um, uh, today we have Owen Everard here, um, who is a sports Pilates specialist. Um, well, he's going to explain exactly <laughs> how he incorporates uh, Pilates into uh, his training. And um, yeah, so and how we can use it for our uh, recovery and and uh, and, and improving our overall health uh, and function and fitness. So first and foremost, welcome to our show, Owen. How are you? Really good. Thank you so much for having me on, Funk. No problem. And again, we don't have Owen visually, but we definitely have him audio-wise. So, and that's the most important thing. So first, Owen, how did you, uh, why don't you take us, give us a background of uh, who you are and, and how we got to, how you got to this point here? Yeah, so, um, I, ha I am a chartered, I'm a physical therapist, so like a kind of chartered physiotherapist it's called here. Um, I have a PhD in human movement and biomechanics, and I would be a kind of five-time national running champion from kind of like 1,500 meters all the way up to like 10K. Um, so I would have, obviously from my, my physio background, been aware of like the importance of good exercises and staying um, injury-free, but... I, in my late 20s, would have started sustaining a few more injuries. And um, I want to really then look at uh, a kind of exercise routine. I had been kind of qualified in Pilates. And while I find Pilates is quite good, it was a lot of exercise on the ground. So I wanted to kind of come up with a routine that would allow you to uh, be on your feet and kind of use the muscles that you've been activating and kind of switching on in Pilates in more like functional standing positions. So um, that's that's kind of how I came up with it and the kind of goal of it. So you're in Ireland and you're yes. the and you're the nat you were or are or you were the national champion. Were was the national champion. I'm currently now the world over 35s champion. But uh, oh so <laughs> oh <my laughs> moving moving up the like. Uh, the older events, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Previously, the national champion. I was five times national champion in my and past, and then um, moved to the my more older events as I've got older. Wow! And how old are you right now? Thirty. I'm thirty six, but I'm turning thirty seven this month. <laughs> okay. Well, so so I guess you know with all of that hard pounding, right? Uh, yeah. Consistently hard pounding and being able to sustainably continue to be a world champion. Um, you know, I, you know, the, I like what you said about, uh, you know, Pilates generally is on, on the ground because that's how I remember Pilates being right. Yeah. I remember, or in, in machines, like specific machines. How have you taken that, uh, traditional, I guess, Pilates and, and kind of incorporated into your own? Yeah. So I think that's like, I like Pilates initially because you need, you want to have like simple positions to kind of learn how to like switch on the right muscles like mm -hmm. there's generally three reasons why people move poorly. The first is like a mobility issue, which we want to address. And we'll do that with kind of Pilates exercises, as well as yoga is quite really good for that. Mm -hmm. Then stability, like activation, like actually learning how to like switch on dormant muscles like our glutes, like our core. So mm -hmm. Pilates can be great initially on learning how to like on the ground, 
activate the glutes, say, with our glute bridging, like learn how to use the core effectively. But as the last part of what can cause poor movement is motor control, it's like <laughs> learning the technique. And I found like there was a kind of um, a gap between like the like the exercises on the ground they just kind of did more reps or you know kind of more harder variations but they're still like these exercises on the ground so what i focused on then is like once we've got the muscles activated like get on our feet and then learn how to like essentially learn these squatting these hinging patterns these like single leg deadlift patterns and incorporate that in because then it kind of it sets up nicely if people wanted to go to do the gym they kind of have the the kind of baselines for it or if they are going back running they're learning how to use those muscles in kind of more like standing positions i have an exercise i call the running man which like essentially like we want to use these muscles on the ground and when we're familiar and they're kind of a little bit tired uh have it that we're able to switch on those muscles in more functional positions which would help us more for our running action or as i said if we were going to then advance into the gym we have that base baseline good movement um of say Alvar Mail's hierarchy and then we can yes. move off the pyramid. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So we have so I have a whole bunch of things. Okay, so first, what is the difference? Explain the difference between Pilates and yoga. Because I know that sometimes they get buckets yes. in the yeah, same yeah, bucket. bucketed together. Yeah. Yeah, because like as you said, there's quite like uh Essentially, like the Greeks would have talked about it, that like there's three types of exercise that like every human should master. Right. So um, there's restorative exercise, which is like, you know, restoring your body, having the ability to move through your full range of motion in a controlled mm -hmm. manner. So that's why yoga and Pilates can be classed together because it's, it's in that restorative bucket. The other one would be much more in your uh, wheelhouse, which would be martial uh, which is the Greeks would have always said, like the ability to defend and attack mm -hmm. is important just to have those skills yeah. and those type of strengths. And then the last thing would be pedagogy. We like, you know, a sports hand-eye coordination. And unfortunately, like modern life has got us overly focused on, on the pedagogy side of things and not enough on the restorative or on the martial, the, like those general skills. So with yoga then, sorry, if we're looking at the restorative element of things, that looks at much more of the mobility aspect. So it's like the goal of yoga would be like centering the breath, focusing on like holding sustained positions with the goal of like lengthening out. Um, so there is like a stability component, but it's much more on the like the flexibility side. Uh, Pilates is much more on like the activation side of things, like switching on the core, getting the glutes moving. There is a component of mobility will have exercises that will improve mobility but the focus is more on like the core stability exercises the glute strengthening exercises so yeah that's like pilates if we think of it as like restorative strength and yoga is predominantly restorative flexibility or mobility right so man it's so it's crazy that we moved away from pilates because like when i say moved away it's not as it's not as you know top of you know it uh, you know top of household or, or the talk of yeah. the house like yoga is because because we need to to learn how to activate because we're everything's turned off in our lives right we're driving we're walking yes. I mean, we're sitting and so we should be doing everything we can to learn how to activate because when we activate our glutes uh you know when we're a little bit more mobile but let's just talk about the activation portion of it we get we we get we're stronger in our squats we have less like knee joint pain and lower yeah. back pain and you know elbow pain and, and whatever it is because we're we know how to activate the muscles that are going to be used more in the movement that we're doing yeah if we just take the gym like you know Alvar Mail has a great hierarchy you know he would have been the snc coach for chicago bulls and yeah. uh, uh an nfl team that won the uh, championship as well but like he would talk about that a bit good movement would be at the bottom of that you know being able to as you said control your range of motion mm -hmm. in a it, move through your full range of motion in a controlled manner being able to like uh, have the activations muscles switched on having good technique once you have the good technique then you need to be building like robust fitness can you do a move like 10 to 15 times with holding the form like learning like getting the tendons, getting the muscles like used to that amount of load that Vernga and Betta would talk about, that workload capacity, you know, like um, 
develop in that capacity, then you're in such a more beneficial position for like, you know, strength of like five reps or power because you've just built a, a very robust body that's not going to break down easily. And as you said, a lot of times we can kind of skip those kind of fundamental, uh, fundamental bits, especially when we're sitting a lot. These muscles are being switched off. And, um, you know, it's like if we have the brake on all the time because things are starting tight or weak and then we're trying to like fully use our capacity it's not going to work it's like we have the brake on and then we're just trying to put the accelerator on as well we need to let the brake off get things moving correctly and then when we put the accelerator down it's going to be much more efficient yeah and how much more efficient are we going to be like to think about like one of the things that we like you know when we're when you are in your 40s your 50s your 60s your 70s and you're just getting back to health I'm not even going to yes. say in the gym. I'm just talking about, hey, man, I got to lose all this weight. Um, I haven't worked out in years or I've been going to the gym doing these old school bodybuilding workouts that aren't yeah. working or I'm going to the gym six times a week because I, I got to I gotta lose this weight really quickly. So I'm going to go to the gym six times a week. or it's getting warmer outside right now. I'm just going to I haven't run ever, but. I got to run because I know that, hey, man, I, I'm not going to go to the gym. Maybe I can just go running. And all of those things like will lead to injuries, will lead to, um, you know, uh, 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 just just you're, you're, you will, you know, uh, you're, you're in such a great, you know, two, three, four, four weeks. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get this injury and then the momentum switch comes off and then you're you feel even worse or even more injured. And so I like when you're saying like for us. That that mo that mobility piece, that restorative piece, that stability and motor control is so important, like almost more important than jumping into the gym, like nutrition, all that stuff. But if we're going to talk about that, would you say that specifically as we're getting older? Yeah, 100 percent, because uh, like especially as we're getting older, like, you know, if you're running or if you're doing that, like more pedagogy, like we always have it. Like, I think as you get older, the thing that um can cause the most problems is trying to do the things that you did when you were younger like right. if you have and especially if people either you either find it across the board you can have your elite athletes who maybe they're used to always just go into the gym and they have a routine that they would have done when they were like playing football or for me it could be they go out they'll go back to what the running they used to do previously and that kind of mm -hmm. happened to me like in my late 20s, 30s, I was still trying to run like I was in my 20s, but it's like, I'm not in my 20s now. I need a rest day. I need to do like restorative movement because guess what? I've been sitting now in a desk job for like say three or four years and things are getting tight. The body doesn't have the same kind of like restorative capacity. It just naturally has when you're in your 20s. So mm -hmm. it's just so, more, so much more important to have the balance. Otherwise, as you said, you get into this routine where we get injured, we lose the momentum, we come back, we kind of just try run exact or we try exercise exactly like we did before. And it's not going to work in the same way. So you need, you know, they say it about raising kids. It's like the, the one sure way of like failing with kid two is like trying to raise them like kid one. And it's like the same. It's like the, like the full foolproof way of like not getting the most out of yourself in your forties is just training exactly like you did in your 20s. You gotta have, you have different strengths. Like a lot of times as we get older, we get aerobically stronger, we get physically stronger, but we mm. do get less, we get less um powerful, like you know, explosive power goes down. Flexibility, mobility isn't just a uh something that we have naturally, we just have to work on it. Mm. And actually, because we'll have that natural strength that kind of builds on years, we don't have to you don't have to develop that capacity as much. You'd be better off with, like I said, a Pilates, even a yoga, something that's restoring your body so mm. then that the other sessions are much more effective. Totally. I love that. I mean, that's what I've had to teach the guys in, in that do my program is we have those those uh, uh, recovery days, right? So yes, workout, yeah. recovery, workout, recovery. But on those recovery days, there are mobility routines, yoga routines. And when someone just joins the program, they don't even do that. Like they're just they're, they're just focusing on workouts, workouts, workouts. And it it, it gets to like phase number three, month number three. And then all of a sudden they get these injuries or like, Hey, funk, I can't do, I can't do lunges. What should yes. I do? Instead? And I always say, 
well, you have to do lunges. It's one of the fundamental movements. So why can't you do lunges? What's happening when you, when you do a lunge? Yeah, the yeah. Oh, well, I, and then I say, are you warming up? Number one, yeah. check. Are you stretching after the work program? Yes, check. Are you doing the, the recovery? Oh, no, no, no. I just don't have time. It's like, dude, that's what it is. And then they start doing it because yeah. it's very humbling to do yoga because it's uh, it's humbling. Like we're, we're not mobile and flexible like you yeah. said, right? And so but when they start doing it, it's like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Um so yeah, everything you said there is so. And, so and as well, like that, it's like you know, as I said, I'm a kind of physical therapist here as well. Like Emerson has this quote: "Is like you ask for a new idea when you haven't used the first one." And so often people are like, yeah. "Oh, like oh, I can't." Have you done? Have you done the platys? No, but how do I fix this knee pain? It's like <laughs> I've told you. You just you're you're just counting this and it's like sometimes this these exercises like a glute clam turn lying on your side you know working those like glute medius muscles mm. they'll keep the knee from buckling in which then allows better alignment of the knee which allows less pressure on the knee it, if you looked at the exercise you think that's easy but you do like three or four reps of that all of a sudden the side of your glutes are burning right. you know like and and that is important that these these look easy, but we want like intense multiple reps to really get these fired. And then, as you said, it allows much better like long term results in the in the kind of the money sessions, like the ones that you're doing, like your squats, your lunges, your your like deadlifting, your your gym program, because you prepared your body for that. And as you said, as people get older, they don't realize do you need less of those really intense sessions. But you need to still train to prepare your body for those intense sessions. Exactly. And that's how you get the results. Hundred percent. It's um, you know, I had a really bad back, extremely bad, like like taking prescription drugs, and it wasn't until my physio uh, person took me through some glute activation <laughs> exercise, yeah. and literally. Um, you know, I do them all the time along with mobility. There's a, there's a full a bunch of stuff, but it, it's a glute activation. Um, and, and, and doing that before my training, doing that, you know, uh, every day, it's every day has alleviated a lot of that back pain that, you know, was, was so persistent. Um, so let me just, let's go back to the Pilates now. And why did you, why did you use Pilates for your running? Because there's basically for running, especially yeah. long, like especially longer running, like that's why yeah. I think people like doing your programs, Funk, is what I recommend for people as they get older. Because yeah. runners don't get, for general fitness, runners don't get like muscle tears. It's all like plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, knee pain, hip pain, back pain. Mm. There, because, right, there's three systems that absorb load in our body. The passive structures are the knee, the ligaments, the joints, and the tendons. The muscular system, and then the, norm, the neuromuscular system tells us how to coordinate everything. In running, running on its own doesn't activate the muscular system. It's great for burning calories. It's great for cardiovascular fitness, but it's not good for activating the muscles. So as I said, as I got older and my recovery, your recovery capacity goes down slightly, like my like I had a hip problem for like 20 weeks I had like shin splints for ages I had like you know like my knee started to hurt so I needed something especially as you said we're sitting like 10 hours of the day I needed something to start turning on these muscles so that when when I'm in then doing my running or even if you're in the gym these areas are activated. Like I use an example, classic Irish man example here. It's like if we and you are in the bar and then you're in fantastic shape, Funk, so it'd be good to <laughs> be bar with you in case something kicks off. But, um, if we're in the bar, right, and you're beside me and someone starts a fight, you're there to help me to try to defuse the situation. 100%. If you're at home asleep and someone starts a fight, I mean, the bar, you can't help me. You're asleep. And that's essentially what can happen when we're running or even in the gym. It's like you need to like specifically at least once a week activate these muscles. Like you said, you're doing your glute, core, glute activation, do your core yeah. activation. Yes. Because what that does is 
that wakes up the muscles. And when they're awake, when they're awoken, they'll naturally, like your body doesn't want to be hurt. So they'll naturally kick in then. Um, if they're actually asleep, like they're dormant, they can't kick in. And so that's why we get these overloads, especially in running. Wow. I love that. I love, man. And I love that. I love the analogy. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> it's so true. Um, so now you've, you, so you realize, okay, Pilates is great, but now you're taking it to the next level because you created your own version. Is that what's happening with sports Pilates? Is that your own? Yeah. Okay. That's because when I did, like I have my PhD in biomechanics. Okay. Um, I had my own obviously experience with running. So while I loved I would have done yoga. I would have done Pilates. I've done like the Pilates instructor courses. But as I said, I just felt it was a little bit like, say they do, once once the muscles are activated, there's like certain thresholds you just got to hit. Like I still think like the, this is supplementary stuff. I don't know why I'm like, um, okay. There's, this is supplementary stuff. Sorry, I can hear myself back there. I don't know what that is. I'm going to just echo cancellation here. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you can, you, this is supplementary stuff. So once you hit a certain threshold, you've hit that threshold. You don't need to then like do a million different uh, exercises on the ground. You should right. now get on your feet and learn the motor control of those areas. And mm. then same, once you have the motor control, you are better off then for the fitness, getting into the gym, doing like a proper gym workout, as opposed to like, I wouldn't advocate doing Pilates, say, seven days in the week, you should have some strengthening, some gym sessions. You should have a little bit of your Pilates or you might have like your cardio, be it cycling or running yeah. as a good balance. And that's why I wanted sports Pilates. It's yeah. designed specifically for runners so that we're like, once we get the threshold of on the ground, we're then moving up onto our feet and we're doing moves that will help, uh, help runners. And we're just kind of hitting a threshold. Now, the first few weeks for people, it's, it's tough. They're not used oh, yeah. to, they're burning. But after a while, it's like, it's a little bit easier because once we hit that threshold, it's like, they just have to keep it topped up. Now we vary it up a lot, but uh, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And, and I think, I know you created it for running, but like when I took a look, um, specifically for us, because we do total body workouts, they're, they're, they're 30 minutes metabolic. So we're moving on Brilliant. all planes of motion. Right. Yeah. Body weight and dumbbells because it's the lowest, it's the you know, lowest friction. You don't think you don't need barbells. We don't use machines. It's just literally our yeah, body yeah, weight. That's cool. what we're gonna be using. And dumbbells, obviously, because we have to build muscle. But I always talk about it's very important to master the movement, right? And so guys will post their 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 exercise or whatever in the in our Facebook group. And I see like it's all kinds of different you know, uh, things that are happening with the move, with the technique that are off. But then a lot of the, a lot of that is from their, their motor skills, which is what you talked about, right? The movement pattern, not being able to, to, to connect that the knee buckles when you do that front lunge, your knees buckling, or when you're doing squats, you're automatically, you're bending over as your knees are buckling <laughs> into a squat. And so it's, it's yes, teaching the technique, but imagine with, with sports Pilates, when you when you master your motor motor control in specific positions and movements, um, it just translates over to your everyday training and movements. Hundred percent, right? Like like incredibly, incredibly, incredibly. Like because if you think about it, like I'm actually even working on this uh, product. I must chat to you again about it. It's called the back aware belt. Just because yeah. of that, I would have seen that. It basically just gives you like feedback. It's a weird, you, it's like a belt you wear. It gives you feedback like you see it on your app. Right. When you put oh. your back into a poor position. Yeah, it's like, look, I'm spending unbelievable amounts of money on it, but we're getting there. So, um, <laughs> oh my God. I don't man. care. Like, I just want to get, I think it'll be great when I have it done. Yeah. But, uh, totally. but like that, that, like you have someone, you could have two people, right? And one could do half the reps of you. But if they have their core engaged and then on the squat, say, and they're fully getting it, like say in the glutes and in the legs versus right. someone who has poor technique. And we talked about those three systems. Mm. If you're using your like ligaments and your joints to maintain the load, one, it's like an increased chance of injury, but two, it's like, you're not going to get the results that you think you should get because it's like one person's actually getting fully, say the glute and the leg working with the core being engaged. The second mm. guy is like rounding on his back, 
So it's like the glutes aren't really going to be kicking in because there's a thing called arthrokinetic inhibition. And what that means is that like a joint, muscles around a joint will not fully contract when the joint is in a poor position. It's like it doesn't want to, uh, you know, it, it doesn't want to get you into trouble. So it's just like the, the actual like neural signal to the joints re reduces when, when the joint is in a poor position. So if we're hunched over, like the muscles around that joint won't fire effectively. So as you said, if you can get like the good technique, it actually can help with the performance and the exercises as well. Yeah, unbelievably, uh, unbelievable. So let's talk about um, like the, the the Pilates portion of it because I'm I'm really interested in. Um, I mean, I mean, maybe this is off top off topic actually, but I, I like having this type of a system in place for guys who are older because. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just even myself, 100% for myself. It's not just guys who are older, but I'm 53. So for me, Jeez. this is like 100%. And I'm a, I'm a former professional, like, uh, athlete in two different sports. And so when you're doing it like you, when you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, and when I was younger, I didn't stretch. Like stretching? No. Warming up, maybe. I'll hit a couple balls because I played uh, beach and indoor volleyball. But I never stretch. And when I was fighting, I barely stretched. So now I'm paying for it. And I'm paying dearly for it. So yeah. these type of things are amazing because now it's opening us up. It's reactivating all of these smaller stabilizing muscles, uh, you know, and, and, and get, giving me more control over my body. Um, so what, what, what would a, what a session look like? A sports generally, Pilates session of like. Yeah, generally what I do on a sports Pilates session, we start with like a hip opener, very similar to like the world's greatest stretch, or I do a kind of like modified like yoga position, you know, like say the downward dog yeah. into like sun salutations. So we start generally with like a hip opener type exercise. Then um depending on the session, we're always gonna kind of hit like um some kind of like core work so what i like to do is practice that neutral spine which is like archer back up come all the way down so we'll do some like easy core work initially and then progressively make those a little bit harder just to like <laughs> dial in that like control because it's like it's just getting it's getting that awareness of your position as well as actually just activating the muscles because then that will help us when we go to our feet so we might do like some like bird dog into like crawling you know, into like your side plank. Um, and then what I like sometimes is one the ones we do is called transition. So we'll start on the ground, say if we're doing like glute bridging. And really, when I say like firing, like working those glutes till you're like burning, like you really need to turn these on. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go into like maybe like a kind of donkey kick type of exercise with like a heavy band into a single leg deadlift and standing. So what we've done is like we've used it in on the ground, on all fours and then in standing. So we've got used to using the muscles like and engaging the core. So we're moving through the hip, but keeping the core solid mm. on the ground in all fours and then in standing. And we could do that same for like the glute med, start with like a glute clam, go to like a fire hydrant and then go and do like kind of a squat position where because we've worked on those muscles that stop the knees buckling in, we can stand then and people can feel, yeah, yeah, this is the muscle that should be on. Um, in standing, yeah, I really like uh, this, I really like single leg deadlifts. We have some squats, um, always generally body weight. And then we have um, an exercise called a running man, which is like kind of like sitting into a running position and then learning how to push and open up through the hip. Um, yeah, and then we'll do other things. Just So it's always along those lines. You might have like a towel just for like sliders. Right. where you're just pushing out um and and then all the other exercises are just going to be like variations of that but always some stuff in standing stuff to like open up the hips work on your balance um and then a little bit of shoulder like kind of that postural control like yeah and that would be an example i hope that makes sense well 100 like i love that i just like my i got goosebumps going through my body because <laughs> i just love the whole the transitions all of the things that we're doing too, I've got a, a, a PPSC, like a, a, a pain-free uh, certification where Brilliant. for warm-ups, for warm-ups. So those are kind of like the things, some of the things that we we hit. But how long are these sessions? Like, it, would this be something uh, someone would do on their own or would they, like the best way to use, to use this? 
Yeah, I like I think forty five minutes a week is ideal. Okay. Okay. Um, I also have like on our course we have like little ten minute videos if people have mm-hmm. like a calf issue or a hamstring issue that like they can do ten minutes plus then some foam rolling and like the cross ball work just to keep things loose right. and that they could do outside of that but if they did 20 minutes one day 25 minutes the other day if you do 45 minutes true and we just yeah. have them as like yeah videos that they can watch um sure. i i don't know like is it we have a community which is quite good but um yeah. i'm trying to have it that if we can do like a live zoom as well but um yeah. the uptake on that is not great the people are kind of just no. generally like doing their thing and posting up yeah. so totally yeah do you do are they live follow along no do generally you? it's yeah, they're like their follow along videos are pre recorded. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like I, I'm doing every rep, which I do Love like it. because it's like, yeah, you can see that it's like, you know, you can see when I'm hurting, you can see when, we're doing it. <laughs> totally. and the thing is, I really try like get a lot of exercises done. The other thing, when I used to do some Pilates. I used to, I nearly be coming out cold. You know, you'd feel like Jesus, like we didn't really, <clears throat> we didn't really get a lot, and that's why it's great. Like, say even. I recommend people, you know, go to the likes of you for a program because, you know, like you don't get back time and the effort. And I see it in the gym that people can be so frustrated because they're doing that. They're buying their membership and then they go in and they're like a lost puppy in there. They're kind of walking around, <laughs> do one little like some like, you know, maybe a lap pull down, but not really no sets of reps go across to another exercise, probably not do it correctly. And like, they're leaving after an hour going, what did I really do there? Where I like a really concentrated session where you feel like, yeah, I really work there. And I feel like people don't, you know, um, for how much it costs, people don't enough put like emphasis on their their own time and effort. Like, you know. A hundred percent. It's I'm laughing so much because I've used that exact same like scenario. Yeah. Because it is not like specific to me. Like you will sit there and look at people. They'll go over, oh yeah, look at this, and then just do two reps. Yeah, and then on their phone maybe walk around. Oh oh yeah, okay, I know the dumbbells do. It. Like it's it's crazy, and it's it's not like for the lack well for the lack of not knowing what to do. And I'm I like you um, do follow along workouts because I want them to follow along, meaning pre recorded. But I want yeah. them. To Feel like they're training with me i want to see how hard like i don't care like i will struggle through these workouts because yeah yeah hey, this is a real workout it's like me and you are training together but i will coach you as yes. i go through it with you so you get that same kind of like they get that at- the intensity that they should be going at plus you know the coaching that they will need or the tips well i, I really love the fact that they're follow-alongs um yeah and, and I, I, as you said there i just think for people sometimes they can be on the fence and maybe this is that but it's like it takes no more time or effort to do the right type of training as the wrong type of training and that's what's right. frustrating like you know like you know i've had loads of people do my pilates and i'm sure you're the same mm-hmm. and it's always i've never had one person go god i wish i had a late waited i get so many emails uh, to loving the course God, I like it's something that I've had this injury for so long, or I've been thinking about doing this, and I just I didn't know, like I just was putting it off. I'm so glad I've done it now. Um, so even just to get a flavor of it, like they did, you know, did my Pilates or did yours. Yeah. It's just something I just feel like people just undervalue that time so so much. It it, it makes the biggest difference, um, Owen, in in. in I'm just going to speak to the, my guys because men, men, men who are listening to this, who are, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even late 30s, as you know, it makes a massive overall difference in your everyday life. Yeah. Like, 100%. The, like doing the workouts. Great. Right. It, like, OK, I got the workout done. And, and you know, I'm, I'm always pushing my guys to because I see that, you know, there's guys in the program or been doing the program who get that first like incredible transformation, like. In the first year, the transformations are yeah. insane. Like you would, you couldn't, you wouldn't even believe it. But then after a while, the, uh, the, the, the need to, to keep pushing, you know, progressive overload, it, it's not as prevalent. So you see someone in a program for a year and a half, they should be like shredded. You know yeah. what I mean? Specifically, if they've gone a year and a half. And sometimes it's just not like that because they're just kind of just going through motion. It may be still using the same weight they were using when they first started. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. And so um, 
don't know where it's going with this, but it it's like, but when like yoga or Pilates mobility is introduced, it's like, oh my God, like this is like, like I feel yeah. way better. Like I feel that so much more better getting more out of my workouts. I'm getting more at work everyday life with my kids, with my grandchildren. I don't have my lower back problem. I don't got my knee issue anymore. Like that, the value of that is way more valuable than the gym stuff for us guys older. I, I 100% believe that the, the value of not being injured, not, not, sorry, yeah. not waking up with pain. Like yeah. every day waking up with pain, like right off the bat, you're in a pissed off mood. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's a, it drains your energy, pain. Yes. So like, and as you said, as you get older, you have to have something. The thing we lose is that mobility. And, and, and why we lose the movement or that posture is that we've been in these bad positions. So something like my Pilates is like just really working on like, as you said, doing those hip mobility exercises, getting the postural muscles working, getting the core firing it then allows the stuff that you're doing to be much more effective. But I do think it's so important that people people do that. Like, I actually was thinking that on a run today. Like, yeah. without, without being... Like, if I... if I Hopefully, this doesn't sound cocky. Um, no, cock, but cock I, it up, I, cock I, it up. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually on a run, literally only today. And I went past, like, two people, and you kind of wave, and they kind of, you know, smile and wave back. And... You could just see they were like, oh God, you know, he's he's going fast or he's, he seems like good. And I was thinking, it's so important that people look good, especially for men, right? Because like, I look at you, right, Funk, you're 53, which I can't believe. You're in yeah. phenomenal shape, right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, like, okay, I have a PhD. I have won national championships. I have a very, like, I, I lecture. I have a good job. I'm like successful in life, but... You, no one knows that. Like, I don't, I can't take out my PhD on a run or just when I'm on the streets. But everyone can see, say if me and you went in, like, I'm in good, like, physical shape for my age. Yeah. Um, people could see, Jesus, he keeps himself in good shape. People can see that you keep yourself in good shape. So in one aspect of your life, that's very obvious. It's clear that this person has discipline, that this person has, is successful in like a healthy body. So it's like, if you have a balance of the Pilates that you're like, your your posture and your core is you're held well. And then you have, you, you need like that strength training on top of that to like add that muscle mass. No one has to ask you, is that person successful? If you're in a suit or if you're in your normal clothes, they'll see, well, at least, at least in only one aspect of his life. And most likely, more aspects because if he's good at this he's probably doing other things you know if you were really out of shape just when someone looks at you it's harder for them to dictate it's like all right is this person a success in life well i know for a fact they're not doing well physically and that's the only thing i can see initially if that makes sense so it's like even even your own health and you'll feel a lot better but even like for how you're going to do in life because we're all like subconsciously like judging or just trying to get a sense of someone so if you can be in good shape and it might be the thing of like you know what i don't have time or it's like people are judging as i said when i went past those people today you can just get a sense they're like yeah god that guy you must be good he just looks in good shape so Hard. even yeah even if i did nothing else it's like well in one aspect of his life he's good i, I imagine he's probably doing that in other aspects one million percent one like i mean one million percent like that is that is it the difference when i specifically in the summer <laughs> right when i'm leaner and and it, it it makes a massive do people look at you differently and then when you start to talk to them it's like oh okay this guy's in great shape and he's smart or and he's yeah. successful in this or that it's like oh my god like then you know what i mean it's 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 so important for us uh, to to eat, to think about that specifically men because you know a lot of times we can mask behind the way we feel and look when we're not happy about ourselves and then um, like you said that judging happens all the time and yeah. you may not think about it but no one knows that you're you know that you are successful no one knows anything when they just see you the first time but what, when they see you and you're confident you're, you're you're you feel good and you look good you're lean you're not over you know you're not obese or overweight 
your posture, shoulders are back, sternum's up. You know, you just, you just, it just, people know they can feel it and they can see it. And then you start talking or then you start doing whatever you need to do. And it just adds that next element. Um, you know, when people see the transformation, this is another thing because not everyone comes in looking amazing, right? Everyone, yeah. specifically the guys who, who I deal with, like they're coming in, yeah. they're, they're, they're in the worst shape that they've ever been and they're looking for help. But when someone sees that transformation, right, that journey, it's just like, man, this guy's okay. If he can do this, yeah. then, you know, we're going to, we're going to, he can do a lot more. Or I saw that guy three, you know, four months ago running past me and he was, you know, out of shape, but now look at him. You know what I mean? Yeah, then exactly. They, and it's not, it's <laughs> not like, obviously you're lucky or lucky. There is genetics that yes, it's not about having a like six pack, but it's like, it's just about, as you said, in general, you can see someone who's working out, totally. even if they still have like a little, like excess weight, you just have it. You can, you know, when someone is generally working out, yeah. they just can hold themselves in a lot better of a shape. And as you said, then if they have it, that the one thing with, with weights, you just need to be careful that like we're not, you can see by you, you're still in good like posture working on yeah. these kind of core controls. Oh. It's like that balance. The Greeks talked about it, that essentially it's this, if you can imagine like an hourglass. So there's like that restorative work to kind of keep the posture, keep yourself moving correctly. There's like martial. So like, the, like not that you have to have the skills but like the strength to like defend or attack and then the kind of pedagogy like the the like cardiovascular fitness the hand-eye coordination and those three things in balance are what they're needed and then the reasons to work out are for the self for like uh you know for you for your like as you said that's a selfish motivation there that i just like being <laughs> looking in good shape it makes me feel good i yeah. know what kind of aura i give off then because people can see what well, he must be disciplined in that there's a second thing it's like for society it's like obviously even the greeks there wouldn't have been well in, in america there's not great healthcare either like <laughs> no like, it's horrible I'm in too, so yeah. it's horrible <laughs> oh but like so the idea being like well you should look after yourself so you're not a burden on the rest of society and then the last bit would be like interpersonal it's like either you believe in god or to say it's a four, what, it's a 400 trillion to one shot that your sperm and that egg meet. So it's like, <laughs> it's such a gift to have a life that you should at least be able to live it. And if you're not, if you're getting, you're injured, you're stiff, you're sore, you're not like, you're not taking advantage of this unbelievable opportunity we have. So they had a really nicely balanced of what the type of exercise you should do and the reasons you should do those exercises. Yeah, I, I love the burden portion that you said. I love everything you said, but the burden for sure, because not only is it a burden on society, it's a burden to your family, right? Like if you yeah. are, the, we're the patriarch of our families. We're here to provide, protect, and procreate. And if we are sick because we could have helped it, and now we're in the hospital and 55 years old and our kids have to take care of us, my wife has to take care of me, and I'm draining their accounts because... We have, you know, the healthcare is not taking care of me, um, you know, taking care of the bill, man, how, how horrible is that? When you're supposed to be the, the patriarch of your family, your family has to take care of you because you didn't take care of your own health. Yeah. You know? And as well, like just that thing of, as you said, you could have sons, you could have uncles you, or nephews, you could have daughters, nieces, like you need to be able to like, like grand grandkids, you want to show them like. Yes. This is part of life. Like being in good shape is part of life. So they're like, they're taking in so much more of like what you do than what you say. Exactly. So if even if like, if granddad at 60 is going out for like a power walk or goes to the gym and they're like, oh, he's going and he can lift you up. Like that's, that's setting that from such an early age that like, that's, that's like base level programming then that that kid at like say eight is seeing that. Yeah, this is what you do. You work out like we're meant to be strong, you know? Yeah, and that's one of the things that drives me in my program. Like, yes, there are guys who have been in the program for a while. Um, but, man, when I see these guys, like their transformation and what they look like now and the things that they're doing that they could never do before and the way they – like, it's, it's just incredible. Like, for me, it continues to drive me because I'm seeing all of these guys who are transforming their bodies, transforming their lives – the relationships and of course adding 
and then just on the mobility side, like just just because that's that's something that no guy does until they're no, they're yeah, they exactly. no, no guy just goes out and goes, Oh yeah, I'm going to uh you know do some some Pilates today. I got you know, it's just gym, try to work out, but that's not in their mind. And and so when and as they well, they think it's easy. Do you mind the times yeah. I have? I have a live class as well. And it's like, oh, is this for is this for women? I'm like, no. Like we have at least half are men. Like yeah. again, they're nearly everyone. I only target people kind of thirties to like sixty. But yeah. they come in. I was like, just do even one class. They do one class and they realize because it's a different type of burn. It's like you're stabilizing. And I'm really here about how much. What's the max work we can get done? in this time so sometimes people can look at something and go oh yeah that'd be easy bit of stretching it's like no 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 you do this you'll know you've been working hard it is extremely humbling Extre- i used to go to yoga across the, at the gym here uh, in the mornings and i would be in the back i didn't care that i was struggling because i knew that i was going to get better and that's the thing i love going into something and just like being horrible at it because I and, and struggling and being like, oh man, and and it's difficult because I know, oh, okay, wait, wait, six weeks from now, because I'm gonna keep doing it, right? I'm gonna yeah. keep getting better and better, and then I'm just gonna feel better. So, um, yeah, and that's I mean, a misconception. I think sometimes people, if you're out of shape, people can think, oh, people are gonna judge me, people are gonna look at me. If I see an out of shape person, we have a, we have like just the roads here, and I see someone running who's yeah. out of shape, a man or a woman. I'm honestly thinking good on them, good on them. Cause that's hard when you're out of shape to go out, you know, in public, you're putting it there. Like, yeah. so sometimes what we perceive is going on is like actually the opposite. They're thinking, oh, are people judging me or I'm not, people are thinking fair play to that person to get out and trying this now. hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, let's get back to just, cause I know we're, we're slowly running out of time yeah. and I want to, um kind of put a put a uh, like the the pilates portion of it like where can i want to i want to be able to implement this yes like, brilliant right 100 like i want it for myself but also for everyone in my program and then men who are listening and maybe women who are listening whatever um you know how do we go about implementing this um like where do we where do we f- Best best place I could say I have a free trial. It's like called yeah. Everard Pilates. So E V E O R A R D P I L A T E S dot com. So Everard Pilates dot com. And then if you want to go slash sport free trial, but if you even go to Everard Pilates dot com, you'll see yeah. in the top right hand corner is a click for a free trial. You could just okay. do a fr- you could do the first week. Yeah. Like I honestly have no qualms. Like it's a popular program anyway. So yeah. like it's not like I'm gonna be. <laughs> like if people I would actually be delighted if people did it and go I know what to do like I change up every week but because yeah. uh, we'd have just so many different there's so many different things that need to be kind of hit and hit hard like from upper back kind of posture to the hip mobility to balance and standing exercises but that would give you like a good indication of the exercises you could just do a free week and yeah. then you know even if you just did that and then funk stuff would definitely kind of kind of assist you from there so everardpilates.com and then you can just go to either sport slash sport free trial or just click that website and you'll see the free trial button in the top corner okay that's actually that's what i was gonna ask you um like like how long would you do one how many times would you do one specific session like you know what i mean so like would you do it for for like a month and then change like if you you take two i do every 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 week every week's different Every week is different. So generally there's about, in our program, we have about six different type of weeks. And then we start like varying that type of week. So week one, that's on the free trial is like a transitions class. So that's what we were talking about on the ground to all fours, the standing. And then week two is um, a sliders class. So it's like a bit more, it's more core focused, um, more abdomen focused. Now still hit some of the glutes, but way more core focused. Okay. Week three, we just add like a small weight to it. So more of a like an, a distraction and it's more of a whole body exercise. So like lunges, um, like, you know, half kneeling lifts. So like across the body, like challenging different positions. Yes. Week four is what I call Pilates flow. There's no, there's no stop. There's no rest in the mm. whole exercise. Yeah. And that's really like, 
it's like standing dominant, but it's really about like hip mobility. That was the thing that fixed my hip, like just cleaned it right up. Like, wow. I mean, I was, I was walking, I, I was limping basically. <clears throat> um, and then I had been given different rehabs and I was like, look, I'm going to try a new one. And like the next day I had no pain, no pain wow. at all. Cause okay. I'd finally like activated things the right way. And then within, I hadn't run in 20 weeks and within four days I was back running. I just wow. knew I just, it was, it was the most magic thing I've ever ha- happened to me, but I was like, I just know it's like, this is better again. Yeah. And I just, and it would get achy, but I just do that one. Like I have a tendency to do that one again. Yeah. Uh, week, f- uh, week five right. is called yeah. like shoulder and glute fire. And mm-hmm. so it's like really where we're really focusing on the glute max, really focusing on those shoulders just to not like, the pushing as much, but just like to get that posture and get that like uh, correct positions. Uh, week six, I'm trying to think what we're doing week six. Oh, then I have one called Mobility Plus. So that's mm. where we really dial up the type of mobility exercises that we're doing. Kind yeah. of a down week just to like reabsorb all that training. Uh, a lot of like pelvic rotations in that one because in running, you need to be kind of able to rotate through the pelvis a good bit. Um, right. week seven is transitions again of kind of like uh different types of places that we hadn't done and then yeah. week eight could be like a mixed bag and then after that it's just like variants of those type of classes okay well wow, that's amazing and it's two times a week i all i look for is like definitely just once a week okay. you could do it. yeah yeah just once but if people do it twice brilliant but like okay. we we will I'll check in with you if you haven't done it once. So we have you on a WhatsApp. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do it. Okay, yeah, brilliant. Great. I'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah. I'd oh, 100%, 100%. I'm hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'm gonna. I'm doing the eight weeks. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use it as my recovery day routine. Um, because um, yeah, I, I just need it. And the what was the last thing I was gonna ask? Oh my god. Um. I love the fact that the way that's set up. I love that it's. Oh, I know exactly. The um. I just want to say something to people who are listening because I do know sometimes that guys will hear something like the hips and go, oh, 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 you know what? That's the one I need. Can I just start at the hip one and not do any of the other stuff? But no, I'll say, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> this happens all the time. That's oh, so oh, good. My hip. Oh, no, can I just do that one? No, no. You need to start from the beginning, correct? Yeah, because that's so good because <laughs> yeah. it's like the skills that you have like the things sometimes we do in week one, like pelvic control is so massive for the hip. A lot of times what happens is people go into an anterior pelvic tilt. So in week four, we do this thing called a squat shakers, which is like, which really helped me. So if you thought of it as like, okay, we'll just do squat shakers, but no, you need at that stage to be able to control your pelvic position. Right. And the way you have that is from like, even week two, where we're really focusing on don't let that pelvis drop as we slide out and if you practice that on the ground so now you're in a much better position to take advantage of it in week four so that's so true yeah it's like these these things are like stepwise that you learn uh, as you go i love it thank you i needed to say that because that's such a good point that's such a good point man i I saw you did this workout i'm like dude you're still in the first phase like yeah I'm doing things from phase 37 (laughs) yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly i've been doing this like you know, years, years. Right? yeah you got to build the endurance the conditioning the the stability the the technique all of those things um owen i am so happy that you were on today yeah i, I really enjoyed this. this one this is amazing um we're going to talk again for sure i'm going to uh do this i'm going to tell my guys to to, to infiltrate and and take over your your, oh, yeah, your, your, your Pilates because uh, you know I I I give them stuff but you know in inside the program but uh, you know I'm this is not my wheelhouse so I'm not going to pretend that I'm a I'm a mobility person or a, you know I know how to do warm ups and even when I when I like I did a mobility program with uh, with Rustin Webb he's a mobility for for men over forty guy and. Um, even when I, I was in the videos and we were both doing it, but I was like, I'm, I, I'm not very mobile. So you can see that difference. So I'm not trying to, to, you know what I mean? But after a while, when there's the same routines over and over again, it's nice to be able to give these guys another, you know, 
uh, somewhere else to go or, or something else to kind of like, okay, guys, you know what? Let's try this new, new thing. Eight weeks. We'll all get in, get, get in on it and see how much better and healthier we, we all are. So I do appreciate you for this. Incredible. Um, yeah, and again, no where, where can everyone, anyone, everyone get a hold of you and, and see you and social media links? So best, life? best place to go is that everardpilates.com and then okay. you'll see the sport free trial. And what we'll do actually, Funk, is like, I've just yeah. loved this chat. It's like, Anyone who's in with Funk, I'm going to just give the first four okay. weeks free. Just Love as like, wow. yeah, yeah. Because it's like, yeah. you've been so nice with your time here. Um, yeah. So we'll just give you like a month at least. Even okay. if you don't sign up, you'll have four weeks. But only make sure like, if we have a list or you just mention it. Like yeah. f- if you contact Funk, um, if you're in his group. Yeah. Uh, and then he'll send me a list and we'll set you up. Oh, um, okay. You want me to say, okay, okay, I'll send, okay. Just, just if they have, or anyone listening can do the first week trial, see if they'll enjoy it. And if they do, then yeah. they can sign up for the eight weeks. Right. Um, but if you're in with Funk's group, I'm just going to give four weeks free just as a oh. thank you for this. That's amazing. I, thank you. That's like incredible. Um, I love it. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to, I will survey my, my crew. I'll get a list. I'll send that list over and we're going to uh, bust out those eight weeks. <laughs> love it, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> For sure. Thank you so much, Owen, for being on the podcast. And um, yeah, so again, if you guys are interested and you're just listening, uh, the link will be, the the URL is somewhere on this uh, page, uh, everardpilates.com forward slash sport. And um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's get, let's get, let's get more mobile. Let's get more, um, uh, stable. Let's get our motor control, uh, so we can restore, we can, uh, uh, be martial and we can be the best men we can be. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the podcast. 